Like, what did you say you used to do for work? You said you sort of worked in the school system for a little bit too? Yeah, I was the athletic director at IC for four years in retirement. I'd been a soccer coach and had a soccer store in Indiana. I coached high school soccer for 14 years there and retired, moved here, and then was made athletic director under less than... <laughs> It was my second retire or attempt at retirement. But I've been in marketing the rest of my career before that. Okay. And pretty much covered the product from, I, I started on Old English. My career was promoted to Santa Flush and I saw it going down the toilet. <laughs> and moved to Coppertone here in Memphis and then into the toy industry. I did Pictionary back in the 80s. Oh, wow. That's yeah. pretty good. League. Who is that? Huh. Who's the Gentleman's League? <laughs> <clears throat> Or you have to talk to somebody? If yeah. you're looking? Yeah, well, we're not. <laughs> huh?
Thank you again for uh, being here, Butch. We appreciate it. Um, we'll wait a few more minutes until uh, Charlotte gets in here and we could uh, do some introductions. But um, I know we all really appreciated um, everything that you shared with us last time about mindfulness. Um, and we're looking forward to it again today. Well, we'll cover a little bit of the same information, but hopefully this will be uh, um, interesting and entertaining. And, uh, and we'll do hopefully a little bit of a meditation. I'll try not to go as long as I did the first session, but um, you know, I've, I've got PowerPoint uh, that I normally do in an hour. So I'm gonna try to cut it back and fly through some of it. Sounds good. Butch, the title of your presentation is certainly on um, appropriate. So it looks like Charlotte's here now. Um, I think we're gonna give a few more minutes for everyone joining in. And then um, I believe Archie will give the introduction today. Wonderful. Yes, I asked Archie not to uh, overdo the introduction. Uh, you know, he, uh, I think most members are familiar with me and who I am. And uh, and Archie, you can probably just say a man who needs no introduction. <laughs> Don't, no worries, no worries. I'm real <laughs> short for you. <clears throat> I started to uh, to don my black wig and my Golame jacket for the performance today, but I decided better better of it. I thought it might fit with with the topic of my presentation today. <clears throat> All right, Charlotte. Um ready to get started go for it dustin no i'm sorry go for it archie <laughs> I think I'm still on mute. Oh, well, oh, hello, 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 everyone. Good evening, everyone. So happy to be back joining you all this evening. And am to see you, Archie. <laughs> yes, and I'm excited to have Judge Butch Childers back with us. So again, as he mentioned, you all, he's been with us before, talking with us a lot about his work that he's been doing. Uh, with mindfulness that has really spoken to me and some of the work that I've been doing at my school as well. And so I'm excited for him to join us as who, 
someone who's a retired circuit court judge here in Tennessee, just doing really awesome, awesome, awesome work. And so I'm not even going to go through his elaborate and awesome resume because he's just an awesome person has done such amazing work but i'm going to just turn it over to him so that he can have the floor to continue us on our journey of learning more about mindfulness and how we can continue to incorporate it into our daily lives um especially with this title as it was already said so we can break those 2020 blues and step into another awesome year so i'm gonna turn it over to you um but i appreciate you being here with us Great, thank you so much, Dr. Archie, and uh, and welcome and hello, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening. Um, I'm going to talk uh, uh, as quickly as I can because I, uh, some of you may have been on and heard my uh, my introduction to my PowerPoint. Uh, I've done this a couple of times before with my partner in crime, Judge Steve Hornsby, who who is also a retired judge and uh, who's now living in Memphis. Um, and uh, it, it's, a, uh, it's a presentation that we call Breaking the 2020 Blues, uh, Resilience and Self-Care in the Midst of Chaos. Uh, I, I see that my wife Amy is uh, in attendance tonight and she just got through telling me about reading an article in the Memphis Flyer that Memphis has been voted by some group as the most stressed city in America. Uh, and so uh, <laughs> my question was, okay, so who voted us the most stressed city in America? So actually, when she told me some of the details about um, our, you know, our large uh, population that lives below the poverty line uh, in Memphis, and that's, I'm going to be talking a, a little bit about Maslow's hierarchy in my, in my slide presentation. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that and uh, and why there are so many stressed people in our city. Uh, so let's just dive into the PowerPoint. Mindful of the time now, I may uh, I may sort of uh, slide through, slip over some of my slides uh, because I've done this uh, for legal groups before, and and uh, so I hopefully will be able to slide through some of them. So. So the question for this topic today is why does the blues man or woman sing the blues? Uh, and you see uh, the, the rum boogie performers in Memphis Mini. Uh, so that's the question for today. Why, why does the blues man or woman and why are we singing the blues these days uh, uh, for the past almost year now from this pandemic? Uh, and so uh, there was a report from the CDC, and this actually uh, dealt with looking at um, surveying folks from April to June of last year. So, so this isn't uh, totally current information. My guess is, is that these percentages have gone up the longer this pandemic and the uncertainty uh, has gone on. Uh, and so looking at the survey that the CDC has done regarding symptoms of anxiety disorder and depressive disorder, uh, they have increased 40, uh, a little over 40%, almost 41% of the respondents reported at least one adverse mental or behavioral health condition. Almost 31% reported increase in anxiety and depressive disorders. Uh, a little over 26% have experienced trauma and stress-related disorders uh, related to the pandemic. 13% uh, started or increased substance use to cope with stress or emotions related to the pandemic. And a little over 10%, almost 11% seriously considered suicide in the 30 days before completing this survey, which is a significantly, uh, significantly higher rate than normal um, and so uh, again alarming statistics but not really surprising statistics based on the stress that we the increased stress we've all undergone uh, living through this pandemic so let's talk about uh, some of these things and as you probably remember from our session in november i'm going to be covering some of the same information and sort of a review of some of the information that we covered in the uh, in the first presentation in November, you know, on the left hand side of the screen, uh, we're dealing in uh, in uh, from the 2020 blues. Now that we're into 2021, the the societal issues that we're all having to deal with from the the COVID-19 pandemic, isolation, 
recession, the issues of racism and injustice, the civil unrest that has flow, flowed from the, the, the racism and injustice and the, and the political environment, the polarization from the political environment, uh, the issues regarding the, the rule of law and, and uh, some of our issues with the, uh, the, the lack of uh, folks following the rule of law, uh, our environmental issues, uh, truth, the global instability, and, and all of those things have caused a big stressor, and that's the uncertainty and the instability that, that dealing with all of these issues that we're having to deal with and cope with have caused. And so we then go over to, you notice the arrow at the bottom, the subconscious issues uh, that we're all, uh, that we all deal with. And sometimes we, we consciously realize it and other times we don't, the personal issues. Uh, and sometimes we don't deal with that, uh, those issues or cope with those issues very well. So we have some dysfunctional coping go on, going on uh, with anxiety and depression and loss of control. And that's a really big issue for most of us is the lack of control, the ability, the inability to do anything about the circumstances that we've been confronted with for the last year. You know, with, with issues with finances, relationships, health issues, the fear of loss and the actual loss, not only the fear, but the actual loss of our close friends and loved ones to this horrible virus. Uh, the fear of failure, trauma, insecurity, inadequacy, uncertainty, again, the, the, the U word, the uncertainty of all of it. You know, we're, we're dealing, of course, with, with old fears, uh, feelings of unworthiness and, and inability to to competently uh, cope with and deal with all these issues, which also, of course, leads to shame and guilt in too many situations. So, Dustin, are you in control of my PowerPoint? I see, there you go, thank you. I'm just gonna let you sort of uh, uh, flip through the slides. Thank you so much for doing that, so I don't have to, to think about doing that. So, I, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Abraham Maslow's work and his hierarchy of needs, and it's sort of a pyramid, and, and you can see at the bottom, the most, the most basic needs that we have are the physiological needs. You know, the basic needs that everyone has, air, water, food, shelter, sleep, clothing, and reproduction. Uh, and, and the next level is the safety needs. Uh, personal, security, employment, resources, health, and property. The next level, are, are uh, what I call psychological needs. Those first two levels are really sort of basic human needs for all of us. And so then as you progress up the pyramid, the next needs are the psychological needs. That's the need to, to love and belong, uh, to have friendships, to have intimacy, family, and a sense of connection. And then the, the, uh, uh, the next to the highest level, uh, again, a, a part of the psychological need that we have is esteem, respect, self-esteem, status uh, among our community and friends, recognition, strength and freedom. And at the top of the pyramid, and, and unfortunately not all of us are able to, to get up to that level, and, and that's the, the uh, self-fulfillment, the self-actualization uh, level at the top of the pyramid, and that's the desire to become the most that we can be, which all of us, I think, probably strive for. Uh, but, but, uh, and I'll go back to the to the article that Amy told me about uh, about so much stress and, and Memphis being the most stressed city right now, and that is particularly since we have so many uh, poor and working poor. Uh, it's all folks can do literally to meet those first two needs at the bottom of the pyramid, the basic human needs. And that's the physiological needs of, of, uh, you know, the, uh, of water, food, shelter, sleep, clothing, and reproduction. And, and then comes the safety, the personal security, employment, resources, health, and property. So because we have so much poverty in Memphis, we have so many people that are struggling just with the basic human needs. 
and 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 that alone of course causes a lot of stress that that we that that we all have to deal with <clears throat> but particularly the people who who uh, who, who aren't making a living, who aren't able to meet their basic needs for themselves or their families. Uh, so most of us in the club are very fortunate. Uh, you know, we meet our, our basic needs uh, very well. Uh, we also do a relatively good job of meeting the love and belonging and the esteem, the psychological needs. And then uh, I, I think knowing most of you in this club, uh, you're doing a relatively good job with up at the tip top of the pyramid with the self-fulfillment and the self-actualization uh, top of the pyramid that, uh, that Maslow talked about in his hierarchy of needs. Let's go to the next slide, Justin, please. And so uh, I, you remember we covered the brain slide before, so I'm not going to talk a great uh, deal about that except to say that you know the limbic system of course is our survival response that's the fight flight or freeze mode uh, uh part portion of our brain and so uh the the part that is stimulated by that part of the brain that's where we're where we're under stressful situations and unfortunately uh you know unlike the early uh the the cave men and cave women uh, you know, everything is not life-threatening for us these days. Our brain thinks it's life-threatening, and, 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 and our brain reacts the same way as if we're confronting the Bengal tiger uh, that the cavemen and women confronted in, in prehistoric days. So it makes our brain produce adrenaline and cortisol in, over, in order to cope with, that, uh, with those stresses. It increases our heart rate. It, it makes our, our breathing shallow where we don't breathe as deeply and get as much oxygen in because uh, our, our limbic system causes the blood flow to go to our extremities, to our arms and our legs where we can run fast and we can stop and fight if we have to with our fist. Uh, our stomach shrinks, uh, shrinks our blood flow our, our, again goes to our arms and legs. Our, our blood flow goes away from our prefrontal cortex. It sort of quiets down where our, our intelligent part of our brain doesn't function as well under stress. Uh, our, that amygdala, that, that uh, reptilian part of our brain is what takes over in stress. And so it, it causes, of course, uh, us to be fearful and it drives that emotion and urges us to move. And sometimes we don't move in a good direction. Uh, the problem with prolonged stress, as I talked about the last time, is it has a negative effect on us physically and mentally and compromises our health because our heart, our immune system, our intestinal system, our kidneys, and our brain are all affected adversely when our, our adrenaline and cortisol uh, are working overtime. Our stress hormone is working overtime, and too many of us are operating in our in our in our work and our businesses, uh, you know we're we're on overdrive uh, at least eight hours a day, and some of us twenty four seven these days with all the stress, and particularly with the pandemic going on right now. Next slide, please, uh, Dustin. <coughs> and so, uh, I want to uh, talk to you a little bit about a subconscious response and using mindfulness. And meditation to uh, to promote a positive response subconsciously, uh, and to um, because as you see the the uh, illustration uh, uh, the top two figures are showing the little smiley faces in our minds, and so uh, the use of mindfulness and developing mindfulness and meditation helps us to to uh, create a positive attitude. And so as you see uh, up at the top of that, uh, of the, those two figures at the top, like begets like, and, and some people call it mirroring. Uh, and, and so I'm gonna pick, out, uh, pick on a couple of people who are really good examples of mirroring positive behavior. Uh, Denise Bolheimer, you're one of them. Uh, Charlotte Hoyle, you're another one of them. And, and I don't see uh, Pam, Pam Austin uh, 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 awesome on the screen today, but she's another 
where, you know, when, you, when you're when you in their presence, you can't help but feel good because they always have a smile on their face. They're always upbeat. Uh, and, and, and that's what I'm talking about, mirroring. And so despite all of the stress and the, and the stressors that we're dealing with normally before the pandemic started, but even more, it's been multiplied probably a hundredfold at this point that, that we're having to deal with. Uh, yet uh, folks like the ones I've picked on uh, make us all feel good when we're around them. So you see the two figures at the bottom, the frowny faces, you know, you know people, it's like, uh, who's the, the Peanuts character who goes around with a cloud over his head all of the time? I, I can't remember, I don't know if it's Linus or who it is. Uh, wow. The guy with the, uh, with the blanket, it may be Pigpen, I don't remember Pig which Pen. one. But, but yeah, Pigpen, thanks Drew. Uh, but you know the people I'm talking about, they, that they go around with a cloud over their head and, and being around folks like that just sort of brings you down. And so the use of mindfulness and meditation really promotes, allows you to have that positive attitude where with the mindfulness approach, you are able to be aware of your surroundings and totally in the moment as much as you can be. And none of us do it perfectly. I certainly don't do it perfectly. I, I'm not positive and cheerful every minute of the day. None of us are. But uh, through, through cultivating this mindfulness and, and, uh, and having a good program of meditation where you, you try to do it as much as you can on a daily basis, although I know, I know that's difficult to do. Uh, so uh, be aware that you, are, you need to be and, and you are mirroring for other people um, their actions. And again, uh, People who have that positive attitude, others around just sort of pick up that same thing, whether you're aware of that or not. Uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the tone of voice is important. Your body language is important uh, as you, uh, as you uh, work with others and, and, uh, and are with others every day. So, you know, be aware of negative spreaders, uh, inoculate with a positive culture, uh, and and ask yourself and be aware through your your mindfulness approach of what signals that you're sending to others. Next slide, please, Dustin. <clears throat> so again, we talked about uh, in the first session the importance of resilience, uh, and, and mindfulness is really important to help us to develop and build resilience. Uh, you see the palm trees there, and, and, uh, and Amy and I have been down in Florida on the East Coast with her uh, mom uh, for almost a year now, since last March when the pandemic struck, although I've been coming back to Memphis every six weeks or so. I just was there last week. Uh, you see the palm trees. Uh, we don't have many oak trees down here on the coast because oak trees you think of as big and strong. Well, the oak trees in a hurricane or strong winds gets blown over. Uh, because they are not resilient, they are more rigid. And and palm trees, you will notice, they can almost bend 90 degrees over to the ground, literally in hurricane force winds. But then after the the storm is gone, they pop right back up and stand straight and tall. And that's what resilience is all about. Uh, and and being able to uh, to to go with the flow is sort of what I call it, is to, is to be able to be resilient in those times of stress and then pop right back up into your, into your uh, positive uh, attitude. So the opposite, of course, of resilience uh, is rigidity and, and chaos. Uh, and so Dr. Dan Siegel's book, Mindsight, uh, uses an acronym that, that he talks about the importance of developing these attributes to become more resilient. And that's Faces, F-A-C-E-S, flexible, adaptive, coherent, and mindfulness is, an, is a, a crucial part of being coherent, where you're aware of what's going on in your surroundings, again, as much as you can every minute of every day. Energized and stable. Uh, so go to the next slide, uh, Dustin. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, I, I like this slide. Uh, this is, uh, comes from Anonymous. Pain is inevitable. We are, if you're alive, you are going to suffer pain uh, periodically. 
you know, we get, we get hurt, of course, physically. We get hurt emotionally when, when human beings do things, sometimes not intentionally, sometimes intentionally, that are hurtful to us. Pain is inevitable, but the suffering is optional. And so pain is what happens to us. Suffering is, is oftentimes what we do to ourselves. You know, I can't control what someone else does to me. The only thing I can control is how I react to it. That's the only thing that I have control over. So you need to be aware of that. Uh, and again, uh, mindfulness and, and meditation, again, uh, when you develop a good practice of that, it, it allows you to be more aware of, okay, this is hurtful. How do I want to react to this? Rather than, than reacting from your fear part of your brain, you are, if you're mindful, you're able to act from that prefrontal cortex, that higher intelligent part of your brain, and not that amygdala in the back part of the brain that hijacks the frontal, uh, prefrontal cortex, where, where you react to a hurtful situation or a painful situation rather than respond rationally to it and realize that, you know, yeah, maybe they meant to, to make that crude comment, that hurtful comment, or maybe they were having a bad day and it caused them to react badly to a situation. So if you're acting mindfully, again, you're able to think through rationally, what kind of reaction do I wanna have here and not have sort of a knee jerk reaction to the stimulus. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Uh, you all will be able to get the, um, the PowerPoint slides and look at these later at your leisure. Uh, you see the four quadrants here, the spirit purpose, the body, the mind, and emotions. And normally, when, when we react to a stimulus, when we confront into to a situation uh, during the day, whether it's work or family or whatever, that normally affects all uh, uh, the whole self. And the whole self is made up, of course, of the spirit, the body, the mind, and our emotions. Uh, and so I don't want to spend, again, a lot of time on this, but our goal is to integrate and balance all four of those quadrants. And mindfulness and meditation helps us to do that. So uh, let's go to the next slide, Dustin. Okay, let's talk about practical self-care. Again, I think I touched on a little bit of this in the first session. So this is again, a refresher and a reminder of what we talked about before. It's really important. And this is where we talk about, when we talk about practical self-care, you know, it sounds like a tri trite phrase because we've overused the balanced life um, language in the past. But it's really true. It's important for us to maintain balance in life if we want to take care of ourselves. It, 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 it's, it's imperative that we all do that. Now, some of us do it better than others. We have to have enough sleep. We have to pay attention to our natural life rhythms, and each of ours is different. It's important for us, um, if not daily, certainly frequently, to connect with nature, go for a walk, get outside. It's amazing, and for those of you who do it, you know what I'm talking about. It's amazing if you go out and go for a walk, what it does for your mind and for your psyche. Uh, movement is really important, physical movement. Uh, emotional intelligence, uh, you know, that's, a, that's sort of a, a, a key phrase these days. You know, we, we, we talk about uh, the, the IQ, the intelligence quotient, well, this is EQ, emotional intelligence. Meditation and mindfulness, again, is an important part of, of uh, maintaining self-care. Reflection, meaning-making, and inspiration. Recreation or recreation uh, is important. And, and leaning into structure. And when I talk about leaning into structure, I'm gonna talk a little bit about one of the apps that I've just discovered recently. It's, it's a, an app that Dan Harris, who works for ABC News, he literally had a meltdown on air. He had an anxiety attack on air. And after that experience, he, he learned about mindfulness and meditation. And he's created this 10% happier app uh, that I discovered uh, actually literally at the first of this year. 
uh, and it really has been a godsend for me. I highly recommend it. Now, it's one of those that you have to pay money to, to get the app, uh, but it's been worth it to me, so I highly recommend it to you. We'll talk about that a little bit more in, in just a minute. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, again, sleep. The studies have shown that 70% of us are sleep deprived. And sleep deprivation has been linked to a lot of bad things. Depression, ADHD, ADD, cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's, and, the, and other dementia issues. So, so part of the importance and part of the function of deep sleep is it restores our brain functions. Um, and it, and it, and it uh, allows us to have optimal brain performance. So what it does, I understand, and I'm not an expert on this. My friend Judge Hornsby is, is, is much more knowledgeable on this area. I actually called him this morning to see if he was available, and he wasn't, unfortunately. Uh, Steve can, can, uh, can really explain this a lot better than I can. But during our, our sleep, we enter into a stage that's almost exactly like a coma. And so during that stage of sleep, the deep sleep, our, our spinal fluid comes up into the brain and sort of washes. It's like a dishwasher for the brain. It washes and cleans out all of the, the plaque and the buildup and the toxins that are built up during our brain during the day. And if you don't get enough sleep, then all that bad stuff doesn't get washed out of your brain. And so in Alzheimer's, for example, those proteins, the, the harmful proteins build up in the brain cells. And that's what eventually causes the dementia issues. And so pro getting proper sleep uh, at night is an important process of, of, of dishwashing the brain and washing all that bad stuff out. And, and actually, of course, if you wake up in the morning and you have this brainstorm idea, that's normally what happens to us if we get a good night's sleep. And, you know, you wake up and you think, oh, that, that hairy problem I've been dealing with at work, I think this may be a way to solve that problem. So it's amazing how that works. Uh, you know, the, the slide says eight hours a night. Uh, the, the experts say at least six to eight hours. I normally wake up after six hours. Uh, you know, that's just my sleep cycle. But at least six hours a night, I highly recommend. Uh, and if you can get eight, that's, that's great. Uh, dark, cool room. It's really important, the blue light and the white light. And the blue light is what's emitted from our computer screens and our smartphone screens. Uh, blue light and white light tells our brain it's time to wake up. You need white light and blue light in the morning. That's why sunlight wakes us up in the morning. When we see sunlight, you know, our, our brain tells us it's time to get up. And so try if you can, and I'm guilty of this, I don't do it, I'll, I'll admit, uh, it's really hard to turn off that smartphone an hour before I go to bed or, or get in, out of the front of the TV. I, I normally fall asleep in front of the TV. Next slide, please, Dustin. Okay, again, uh, it's important again to think about and recover the natural rhythms of life. Uh, you need to, to tr if you can, transition into the day, you know, wake up between six and eight, mental work between nine and two. And you can see the, the little chart on the circadian rhythms, the body clock. You know, I'm not going to go through all that and for the sake of being mindful of the time this evening. Uh, physical activity is. Normally, we're at our peak between 2.30 and 2.30 p.m. in the afternoon and 6 p.m., socializing between 4 and 7 p.m., winding down between 7 and 9, and a transition to sleep between 8 and 10 p.m. Now, you know, in the, in the olden days, back in the day, when the farmers, the farmers get up, you know, when the rooster crows uh, and, and, and go to bed or at sunset or shortly thereafter. Uh, and so, you know, none of us do that anymore. Uh, you know, we, we uh, I, you know, I sleep later and, and, and go to bed later. Uh, but that's sort of the circadian rhythm that, that most of us still have with our body. So again, pay attention to your body and, and look at that chart because you can tell when you are the, the, the sharpest and the most productive 
uh, you see on the uh, on the chart on the left hand side of the screen 3:30 p.m. Fast, fastest reaction time. Now that's a generalization, of course. It, it's not true for all of us because we have different rhythms. Go to the next slide, please, Dustin. <clears throat> so again, get out in nature. Uh, research has shown that that we benefit from being in nature. It lowers our stress. It improves our mood. It reduces our blood pressure and our heart rate. It relaxes our nervous system and our slows down our brain waves. And so it improves the, the overall homeostasis of our body. Even five to 10 minutes, uh, you know, getting outside and, and walking in nature and, and, and you know, among the trees and that sort of thing. Next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, okay, Charlotte's ask a question I see is popping up on the screen. Let me tell you, since I found this 10% Happier app, Charlotte, uh, I've developed the habit and it started off, my, my cousin in Michigan told me about this. She's a retired social worker and she has helped me with the, with the mindfulness program. We compare notes all the time. And she told me about this 10% Happier app because they had a 21 day challenge beginning January 1st. So she and I sort of did that challenge together and, and uh, you were supposed to meditate at least 15 of the 21 days. So I was able to make 18 of the 21 days. Well, guess what? Before I started that app, I was doing meditation, honestly, hit or miss. I might do it two or three or four or maybe five times a week, but it wasn't regular. Since I used that app, I have been getting my phone. I get up out of bed, I go get my cell phone, I bring it back. I don't keep my cell phone by my bed. Although my wife does, I'm going to tell on her, uh, and, and periodically I'll hear her cell phone ding, and so I chastise, has, chastise her a couple of times, but I get my phone, I turn it on, and I lay back down in bed. I do my meditation. Uh, he's got a bunch of really experts on mindfulness and meditation, and so they do a little bit, a four or five minute talk about what the current topic is. Uh, Self-compassion was one that I really needed, uh, and and they have different courses. Some last seven days, some last thirteen days. Uh, it, you, they they've got um, uh, sleep meditations for you to use at night if you have trouble going to sleep. So Charlotte, to answer your question, I've developed the habit of doing it first thing in the morning before I get out of bed, and then they do a, a no more than a ten-minute meditation. And I'm telling you, it has been a godsend for me. It's been miraculous what it's done to calm me down, and and to and to just it it just it just starts my day off right, where I'm able to be as much as I can be, much more positive and less stressed. Although I might get an argument from my wife about that, so I'm not <laughs> going to let her talk. But, but that's my recommendation. Whatever works for you, Charlotte, is what you should do. Just try it. And if you want to do it before exercise, that's fine. Or if you, you can do it after exercise. If you do yoga or anything like that in the, in the morning, you know, do it, do it before your yoga or do it after and see what works best for you. That's my recommendation. There's no, right, there's, there's no right or wrong way to do it, okay? Okay. Uh, and, and, and don't worry about doing your meditations perfectly. A lot of people think of, well, I'm not doing it right. There is no wrong way to do meditation. The only wrong way to do meditation is not doing meditation. Okay. <laughs> so, so don't worry about that. Thank so, you, Butch. So you're welcome. So move your body. Uh, you know, emotion equals energy and motion. So move it. Uh, build in movements throughout the day. You know, uh, it, it's like uh, down at the uh, bottom of the screen, it's, it says get up and change locations every 50 minutes like we did in junior high and high school. You know, change classes every 50 minutes. Get up and just, and just stretch. Get up and, and just, you know, do your hands like this. Literally, it gets the blood flowing, okay? Uh, let's just take a, a moment. Let's see, where are we? Well, we're seven, uh, seven, uh, six, eleven by my time. So I need to, uh, to kick it in high gear here, but I'm going to take a, a minute. I want you to do this. I want to relax your shoulders. Okay. We're just going to take a minute to sit up. You don't have to sit rigidly. Just relax your shoulders. Just think about and relax your shoulders. We all have a tendency to, you know, to tense up 
and, and most of my stress is back in my back and neck and shoulders. That's where most of us have a lot of our tension. And so just relax your shoulders. I want you to do your head to the side, try to touch your shoulder to the left. Hold it for a few seconds. Then I want you to go to the right side and try to touch your shoulder all the way to the right side and hold it for a few seconds. Now I want you to roll your head to the back. Roll it as far back as you can toward your backbone. And now I want you to put your head, your, your chin down on your chest as much as you can. Hold it for a few seconds. And now I just want you to roll your head around to the left all the way around. You may hear some cracking and popping. That's okay, that's normal. You know, when we don't move around a lot, that, uh, that bad stuff builds up in our, in our uh, ligaments and our bones, our poor old spine and vertebra. All right, let's reverse and go to the left and around all the way around all the way around do it a couple of times I, I hear mine popping like crazy i don't know about anybody else all right the other thing i want you to do is this i want you to lift your hands in the air and just just wiggle your hands you know you put your your right hand up and your left hand up and you do the hokey pokey and you turn it all about and literally if you did the hokey pokey for about five minutes and then see how you feel when you do that. Uh, again, I think you'll be amazed. Uh, just that little bit of movement, you can, you know, I don't know if you feel it, but I feel the tingling in my fingers and hands. And so again, uh, and I, I think about Dr. Pepper, 10, two and four. If you do that three times a day, 10 o'clock, 2 p.m. and 4 p.m., 10, two and four, Dr. Pepper. Just think about Dr. Pepper. And, and just take a, a three minute break and, and just do a little movement and do a little short meditation. Close your eyes and start your deep breathing. Um, so uh, let's go on Dustin, because I, again, I don't want to keep anybody over time. I'll try to finish up on time tonight. <clears throat> okay, uh, now look, go back go back to the, to the last slide. I, I'll do this quickly. I love this slide because the figure of before meditation is the way I think about myself when I think about before I started me, uh, meditation and mindfulness is my brain was constantly full of, of thoughts. You know, I call it head noise. Some people call it monkey mind. Uh, there's lots of descriptions for it, but just full of stuff. It was like a carousel where you're grabbing for the gold ring and you can't quite reach it. You can't quite focus on one thought. Uh, and, it, and it was really hard. That's what folks who have ADHD and ADD suffer with, is that inability to, to quiet your mind. And that's what mindfulness and meditation does for us. It quiets our mind. And so after meditation, you see the figure on the right, there are far fewer thoughts that we have to contend with to, to focus on. Uh, and, and then we're able, we're more able to go from one thought to the next instead of having all of all of this head noise that we're having to contend with to to deal with the issue that's right in front of us and so we can more efficiently and effectively deal with what's in front of us when we're being mindful than we are when we're not being mindful we can deal with that issue we can solve it much more effectively and usually make the right decision and then move on to the next issue. When I, when I discovered this and used it on the bench, I, I, I found it so much easier to make decisions and, and I was more convinced that my decision was the correct decision. Uh, so again, there've been over 4,000 uh, brain studies on, uh, on meditation and the benefits to the brain, to the heart, the body, and to the emotions. Again, it, it helps to deactivate our stress response. It relaxes our body, it calms our mind, and it, and it improves our focus. That's what I'm talking about. That's what helped me. It improved my focus, where I could focus more intently on the matter in front of me and deal with it and move on to the next matter. Uh, next slide, please, Dustin. 
And so again, one minute of deep breathing decreases our heart rate, it lowers our blood pressure, and it helps to calm our mind. Three minutes of meditation improves our emotional stability and increases our focus. Go to the next slide, please, Dustin. Five minutes or more establishes uh, brain and heart coherence, and that's the part of the FACES, remember the FACES acronym, coherence. It helps to regulate our emotions, and it promotes objective ob observation, where it allows us to become the observer. So it's almost like we're out of body and we're looking down on, on ourselves and on our circumstance. And so part of what I've learned in this 10% Happier app is if you're able to become more aware, then you're able to identify, okay, I'm in a stressful situation. Again, rather than reacting and rather than having our amygdala, our repti reptilian brain react to the situation, we're literally able to identify, okay, what this person has said is, is making me angry. Uh, it, it, it's, I'm not reacting well, I'm stressed. Identify the stress. And what the experts have said is, instead of our blood vessel constricting as we normally do under stressful situations if we realize that we're dealing with stress our blood vessels actually relax instead of re uh, constricting it's amazing but they've done so so many studies the brain scientists have told us and that's part of what i've learned in this 10 percent happier app is they've got the experts who they they have proven this clinically with the with the brain science uh, the neuroscience that they they've done all of these studies on it is there's science behind this uh and and so um uh dan harris has a phrase he uses you know some of this sounds cheesy and some of it feels cheesy but what what he says is you know i understand it may sound cheesy or, or feel cheesy about the self-compassion and that sort of thing. You know, some, some people talk about psychobabble and that sort of thing. And, and, you know, if you want to talk about psychobabble, that's fine, except that the experts, the scientists have told us it really works. And so, you know, don't worry about the, about the, uh, uh, the, the uh, cheesiness of it. Just do it and trust the process. Uh, so go to the next slide, please, Dustin. Again, uh, three by three, three minutes a day, three times a day, 10, two, and four. If you can take as much as three minutes a day, you know, that, that's not very much time. We can all find, uh, you know, three minutes a day, three times a day. Uh, and, and I promise you, if you try to practice that relatively frequently, uh, if you get into the habit, that's the deal. That's, that's what happened with me on the, on the meditation since the first of the year. I've gotten more into the habit, so it becomes more natural for me to do it. And I feel like I'm missing something if I don't do it. That's, that's what, what's happened to me. Next slide, please, Dustin. <clears throat> so, you know, try to take time, if you can, to, uh, to, to read inspirational or devotional work. You know, they've got all kinds of devotional uh, sort of little books. Of, of thoughts for the day and that sort of thing. Uh, last year, Amy bought me a Dalai Lama camera uh, calendar. So each each day, and it was amazing. Some of the stuff that you know that I read from the Dalai Lama, and it was like, and and, and normally a lot of times I'd call my buddy Steve uh, Hornsby up and say, okay, this is a great one for today. I've got to share it with you. And and so it's just really uplifting, positive stuff to reinforce. And to make us, it makes me more grateful. I, I wake up every day really literally thinking, okay, thank you, God, for letting me open my eyes this morning. And thank you for letting me put my feet on the ground and stand upright and, and having this clean water to drink. Really little things like that, that again, sound cheesy and sound trite, but it, it gives you a totally different outlook on life. And again, I, I'm, I'm looking at everybody on the screen and you are all examples of, of, of modeling and mirroring that positive behavior. So I, I, I know I'm talking to the choir, I'm preaching to the choir here, 
uh, but I want to reinforce what you're doing and what you're learning to do and encourage you to, to, to develop the habit to do it every day. So, you know, the reflection practice is self-inquiry. I'm not a big journaler, but I am a big in my, in my mind being grateful for uh, and just naming all of the stuff that we normally take for granted every day that we're grateful for. Next slide, please, Dustin. <clears throat> Uh, and so Alan Lightman is a is one of the Lightman family in Memphis. Uh, he he had he did a TED talk and and wrote a TED book. Uh, it's uh, it's called In Praise of Wasting Time. So I, I encourage you to check out his TED talk. You know, just uh, Google or, or get on uh, YouTube and uh, and and click in Alan Lightman In Praise of Wasting Time. And he said in his book, if we cannot sit alone in a quiet room with only our thoughts for 10 minutes, what have we lost? And, and another uh, quote from his book, wasting time is far from immoral uselessness. And some people think that if you're you know, sitting around daydreaming, taking time for yourself, taking time for ourselves. And that's as important folks every day when you, when you have your, 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 your uh, daily reminder and calendar, when you have to, you schedule your clients in, it's as important to schedule time for you as it is for your clients, because I'm telling you, you can't serve your clients or your customers as well if you're not taking care of yourself. That's what I've been preaching to lawyers. It, it's a crucial part of lawyer competency. If you can't, if you don't take care of yourself, then you're really not competent to take care of your client's business. Um, and so, uh, again, uh, Alan says it may be the most important occupation of our minds. Go to the next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, and, and so in your journaling, uh, these questions, and I actually need to start doing this because they're great questions. Where am I being rigid? How can I be more flexible? How can I be more adaptable to circumstances? Am I balanced in body, emotions, mind, spirit, and purpose? Those four quadrants, remember. How is my energy level and what is impacting it? Am I engaging in positive life affirming activities rather than dysfunctional uh, negative activities? Uh, so again, you see the faces there on the left, flexible, adaptive, coherent, energized, and, sta uh, and stable. Next slide, please, Dustin. So we, we go to the emotional intelligence, uh, uh, important part of our, of our being, uh, um, awareness of your emotional state, uh, developing emotional fluency, uh, you know, you need to be aware of and in touch with your emotions, fear, anger, love, hate, joy, grief, contempt, enthusiasm, uh, envy, frustration, disappointment, embarrassment, disgust, happiness, pride, su uh, uh, surprise, and sadness. If, if you can't feel any of those emotions, you know, if you don't know joy, if you try to avoid disappointment or or sadness or embarrassment or unhappiness you'll never know true joy you've got to be able to experience all of those emotions and to and to be in touch so to speak and i know that, again that sounds like a cheesy word to to be in touch with our emotions but it's really important for all of us yes men men as well as women uh, need to be in touch with their emotions. We all have our yin sang and our our yin side and our yang side, uh, and and it's important to develop both of those sides in order to be a, a well developed uh, human being. Next slide, please, Dustin. And okay, we're going to talk about recreation or recreation. You know, all of the the fun activities that make us a whole person, the, 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 you know, we work really hard. You know, most of us don't have to worry about working hard. We all work really hard. It's as important to play hard. Uh, you know, paint, draw, sculpt, pottery, singing, you know, that's, that's one of my passions is singing, of course, poetry, writing, uh, you know, just you name it, whatever gives you joy and happiness and allows you to take your mind away. It's like when you're, when I'm painting, and I haven't painted since May, uh, I, 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 I've been preoccupied. I've now made the fateful mistake of volunteering for our condo association board down here in Florida. It's the worst mistake I've ever made because it's taken away a lot of my free time, and I'm really having to double down on my mindfulness, and that's why that 10% Happier app has really helped me with 
being a lot calmer, although I know I'm rushing through this presentation and I really don't seem very calm, but I'm, I'm a lot calmer. Next slide, please, Dustin. And so there's your calendar. Let your calendar be your guide. And it's really important to put time to yourself during the day on that calendar. Uh, you know, take five minutes to plan your day. And in addition to work activities, it's important to calendar breaks. You know, every 50 minutes, like junior high and high school, take a little break. Mindful moments, movement, social time, and exercise. Next slide, please, Dustin. <clears throat> Uh, that's for the lawyers. Go on to the next slide, Dustin. Okay, so why don't we sing the blues? You know, we've got lots to sing the blues about, but we have so much to be happy, and, and we are so blessed, all of us, despite the stresses of this awful pandemic. You know, we don't have to look around very far to see people in, in, in a lot worse circumstances than we are. So, you know, it's the old thing about looking at the glass half full rather than looking at the glass half empty. Uh, so let's go to the next slide, please, Dustin. And so here are the meditation apps. There are a couple of free versions. Insight Timer is the one I started out using. It's free. Uh, some of these have a free version and they also have a premium version. I put in 10% Happier down there. If, if you're interested in that, uh, it, it actually, when I first put the app in, it, it said it was going to cost me $100 to get it for a year. Well, after I did the first seven or eight days of the 21 day challenge, uh, a, a discount popped up. And so it was only 50. So I bought it for 50. You know, I, it's, that's $5 a month. And to me, it is, it, it is worth a lot more than $5 a month for, uh, be aware it does cost. But it, it's got so much information and the availability of so much guided information and, and really, uh, really great knowledge that I've learned in, in, in well, in a month since January 1st. Uh, so I, I highly recommend that to you. Uh, you see the websites, the, uh, the, the greatergood.berkeley.edu, uh, UCLA Mindful Awareness Center, uh, the uh, mindsightinstitute.com. Uh, that's the, uh, the Dr. Siegel um, uh, Institute. Uh, the Mindfulness in Law Society is a group that, that a, a, a bunch of law professors started four years ago and they asked me to get involved. So Steve Hornsby and another lawyer, Cindy Pensano and I are all on the board for the Mindfulness in Law Society. Uh, in Praise of Wasting Time, you see the Ellen Lightman book. Next slide, please, Dustin. Uh, well, that's uh, that's uh, Judge Steve and and, uh, and I the, the presentation that we did uh, recently for the uh, Memphis Bar Association. Um, you know, it's seven thirty right now. I wanted to do a little short meditation for those of you who want to stay on. Uh, we're going to do a little uh, five minute or less meditation. If you want to go through one, if you need to drop off, and I know some some have already dropped off uh, the uh, the meeting, and that's that's great. Uh, but for those of you who want to do a little quick meditation. Uh, I'm going to ask you to, uh, again, just uh, sit up straight. You don't have to have a rigid spine. Just sit up straight. As I told you, I've been doing my meditations lying down, and these meditation leaders have said, if you want to sit up, if you want to lie down, whatever way is comfortable for you, uh, the key is to, again, focus on your breathing. So let's just take a few deep breaths. Inhale. And exhale. Take another deep breath. <clears throat> exhale. I usually try to count to four on my inhale. And then I count to five on my exhale because they say if you have a little bit longer exhale, that helps to set your parasympathetic nervous system. And that's the, 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 the uh, part of the body, the nervous system that, that helps us deal with stress. And so it, it, it resets your parasympathetic nervous system. Normally, we, we're dealing with stress in our sympathetic nervous system. And the parasympathetic nervous system is what helps us to, to cope or deal better with stress. So then just breathe normally, but focus on your breath. <clears throat>
What I like to do is just continue to focus on my breath. So if you have a thought that enters your mind, don't worry, that's normal. These random thoughts are still gonna pop in our minds. Acknowledge the thought. If you remember from the first session, we talked about the FOR acronym, F-O-R, focus. Observe if you have a thought that comes into your mind. And return, focus, observe, and return. So again, as you focus on your breathing, I want you to notice your shoulders, your arms and your shoulders. See if you're tensed up. Consciously pay attention to your shoulders and relax your shoulders. Relax your jaw. Just focus on your different body parts and, and notice if there's any tension in any part of your body and just concentrate on relaxing that part of the body. Focus on your breathing and just think about those body parts. Pay attention to the connectedness to your feet to the ground. may have a particular issue that's that's nagging you that uh, is causing anxiety it's really hard to get out of your mind i want you to focus on your breathing you can return your focus to your breathing then that helps to release that thought and let that thought go okay i, I recognize the thought and let it go you enter the focus, you can literally feel your blood pressure going down. Your breathing, of course, slows down. Your blood pressure shows, slows down. Your heart rate slows down. The ability to clear our minds through meditation is what rejuvenates us, rejuvenates our mind. One of the mantras that I've learned through the 10% Happier app is just to say to myself during the meditation, may I be safe, may I be healthy, and may I be loved. May I be safe. May I be healthy and may I be loved.
Okay, I promised I wouldn't go too far over time. So uh, you're gonna open your eyes slowly and uh, come back into the world. And, uh, and, and if you're like most people, you feel refreshed. Uh, normally, every time I do a meditation uh, with any group that I've, uh, that I've done, and I've done it uh, all over Memphis, of course, all over the state of Tennessee, and I've been in other parts of the country uh, doing it as well. Uh, and, and it never fails when I say, okay, it's time to open our eyes. People are like, no, 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 wait, wait, I'm not through yet. I don't, I don't want this feeling to end. Uh, and, and, you know, and, and that's the way I feel. But of course, we have to start a day and we have to go back to real, real life and, and the real world. But you go back again, rejuvenated and refreshed. And of course, when we feel rejuvenated, literally, we feel younger and we are younger. We've helped, we've, we've helped refresh our brain where, where it keeps us from growing older in our brains and, and having the, the, uh, uh, the, the Alzheimer and the other, uh, uh, brain disorder kinds of, uh, of uh, disorders that folks are dealing with these days. Um, and so anyway, I'm going to stop talking because it's uh, by my watch it's 638 Eastern uh, seven, uh, Central Time and 738 down here in Florida. So uh, any any questions? I, actually, let's see. There's, there's questions in the chat room. Uh, if you need to go, please uh, feel free to, uh, to leave. Um, let's see. I need to get out of my Come on, there it is. Uh, see if there are any more questions. I saw Charlotte's pop up. Uh, meditate first thing this morning. Nancy, yeah, that's the way I do it. That's why so many addicted lawyers. That's exactly right. I don't know whose comment that was. Uh, what else? 10%. Uh, oh, thank you, uh, Denise, for putting in the 10% 10, 10 happier. And actually, it's spilled, spelled out to get the app on the app store. It's, it's T E N P E R C N T, happier app. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Somebody had to hop off and, and is a big believer in Maslow's hierarchy. What else do we have? Uh, uh, Nancy says, I knew this is the first time I went to the board to do a math problem. Uh, okay. It looks like I've answered uh, all of the questions. So again, oh, no. Uh, Charlotte has told me before, and I think I said that is, this in November, Charlotte literally went to her doctor, and, and what did you tell your doctor about how much your blood pressure had gone down, Charlotte? <laughs> yeah, because I check it periodically. It had gone down like 20 points, and he was shocked, and I said, do you know, do you know, do you know Judge Butch Childress? <laughs> he's what I've heard of him. I said, well, he's responsible for these 20 points. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I, you I had so a question, much. Butch. Yeah, I, I had a question, Butch, about when you're working with students, and particularly with them, in most cases, being on those bottom, that bottom hierarchy, those two bottom hierarchies of Maslow, then does the meditation help them to maybe clear their thoughts, even though the situation they might not be able to control. Well, let me just ask you, how, how would that help them if they can't control the environment well, that they go back to? Uh, again, Charlotte, what is what it does, according to the brain scientists now, you know, I'm certainly no expert on this, but the, the reading and study that I have done, again, it, it, calming our minds down and quieting our minds and giving us the ability to know, okay, this stuff that's going on, worrying about having enough to eat, you know, a, a, a parent worrying about having enough food to feed their children and to put a roof over their heads. You know, that's why, thank goodness, we've got the movement all across the country to finally increase the minimum wage to mm -hmm. give people, you know, it, even $15 an hour is not really a livable wage, but it's certainly better than what the minimum wage is right now. But, but that's, that's what we all need to be working toward and supporting is to, to give everybody the ability to meet these basic human needs. And so, yes, what it does, even for children, and as I told you, the, 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 the Hahn Institute, the Goldie Hahn Institute is teaching in grade school mindfulness to children. And that's part of what it does is to help them realize, okay, yeah, this is stressful. 
it, it, you know, it, what's going on is enough to stress all of us out. It stresses me out not being able to do more to help folks in that situation. That's stressful for, for me and anybody who cares about, about human beings. It's stressful. And so, yeah, that's normal to be stressed out over things like that. So the key is recognizing that, yes, I'm stressed over it. That's natural to be stressed over it. And being able to recognize the stress helps us to be able to cope with the stress. It's like uh, oh, one of the executives, and I think it's at the insurance company because the insurance companies have, have picked up on this mindfulness thing and they have encouraged their insureds, uh, the, the businesses and corporations to, to provide programs like this for employees for it, so, because it's bottom line for them uh, because this, this executive had some, some medical condition that he had intractable pain. And after learning mindfulness and meditation, he said it didn't, it didn't make the pain go away, but it made the pain easier for me to live with. Knowing that the pain is causing stress to the body somehow, and I don't exactly know how it works in the brain, except to say the brain scientists say it does work to make it easier for us to cope with the stress. And, and, and again, what the scientists have said is, if we recognize and understand that yes, it's stressful and yes, that's a part of life. And yes, we have to go on with life and we have to try to remain positive with dealing with all of these stressful things that are happening to us. And physiologically, again, if, if we recognize the stress and we're able to deal with it and cope with it better, our blood vessels don't constrict, which causes the, 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 problems with our body with the hypertension and the heart diseases and the cancers and all that kind of bad stuff and 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 the and the and the the mental issues it 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 again in, it physiologically helps to increase our blood flow where we don't have as many illnesses to deal with where we don't get as sick you know you have heard of stories where people literally have caused help 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 cause tumors to shrink in their body literally because of a positive mental attitude. You know, we've all heard those, those uh, stories about the, uh, about the miracles. Now it doesn't always happen, but it certainly doesn't happen with a negative attitude. And in fact, I was talking with the, with Amy's sister uh, and, and a friend of ours, who's down here in Florida where we are right now from New York. He's a, he's a, uh, he teaches at Columbia medical school. And, and, and he has said that they are now teaching doctors to pray with their patients. And it's amazing how, how much different the outcome of a surgery is if they pray with their patients before the procedure, before the surgery. And they've studied this and have shown how, what, a, what a difference the, the, the outcome is when when the praying creates the positive mental attitude going into the surgery thinking oh no the worst is going to happen going in saying okay god's going to take care of me it's all going to work out okay and and in the percentages of positive outcomes with those kinds of cases it, it just goes it goes way up and again it's it's proof positive that that the brain scientists are on to to this to this mindfulness and meditation and calming our brain and you know and and prayer is a is a part of that and being grateful and and thinking you know i don't know i don't really care what your religious beliefs are i don't consider myself so much religious as i do spiritual and i am certainly a spiritual person uh and and, and so I, I totally believe in a higher power. I've got a little in, Indian heritage, a little Native American heritage, and I believe in the great spirit, as the, as the Native Americans uh, say. And so I think it's in, in a, a very important part of, of, of who we are. And so uh, I'll, I'll stop preaching and, um, and see if there are any more questions, because uh, again, I've, I've kept you, it's, it's all, well, it's past a quarter till, uh, till six, uh, so, or, yeah, till seven your time, till eight my time. So, uh, anything else, guys? I know I've gone through it quickly. I tried to cover as much as I could, as as uh, calmly as I could. But uh, Archie, thank you so much for the introduction.
Butch, no Butch, you are a true blessing. You have put <laughs> us in another in another place tonight. And it will only be a domino effect because what you have told us, we can share. And particularly like with Archie being in school, I think about the stress of children in the inner city, but then the stress of the teachers that deal with the children in the inner city. So it's oh, a whole yeah. big ball of wax. And I think Dr. Uh, Candy Hill Clark had texted me. I think she was on the call for a minute. And she said that they're looking forward to learning more about mindfulness with hopefully with you as their advisor or consultant or whatever and seeing what they can actually do for students because if we build a more mindful uh student population or children population then we'll have a more mindful adult population well you all have, you all may have read the book the tipping point and you know it's sort of each one teach one and till we reach the tipping point and and where we literally change the world with this stuff Change the world, Butch. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, Butch. Thank you so much, Butch, and, and Dustin and Archie. Dustin, thank you so much for your help. <laughs> no problem. And problem. thank you, Archie, for being a, no a, great, a great new member. <laughs> no problem. All right, y'all have a great night. Thank you again, Butch. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thanks. Let's go and meditate. That's right. <laughs>